Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Today, I don't know if you can tell, but that thing is flat as it can be. We got a flat tire problem here on the skid loader. Last time I was using it, I heard it. When I turned it off, I heard In today's vlog, I'm just gonna walk you through what I'm doing here. I'm gonna pull the wheel off the skid loader, I'm gonna take it to the tire store. I don't know what the skid loader tire costs, so we'll find out what that's all about, see what it costs, I'll let you know. I'll show you what all's involved in removing the skid loader tire, and we'll show you how we're gonna jack it up, raise it up, pull these two tires off, because both tires on the front of this thing are pretty much trashed. This is borrowed from Don the Rock Guy. He's a very understanding person. He knew these tires were about shot so we're gonna go ahead pull the tires off take them to the tire store show you what's involved and tell you what the cost is and we'll also go over and we'll look at the hundred dollar truck that I bought yesterday awesome steal holy crap a hundred dollar truck we're going over to get the title changed over into my name and get some license plates for it so come on with me guys we're gonna have some fun let's work on this skid loader a little bit Folks, what I've done here is I've loosened all but two or three of these lug nuts right here so that I can raise the skid loader up. The skid loader comes with its own built-in jack. I'm not going to jack this thing up. I'm just going to take the skid loader bucket and I'm going to lift up on it. I'm going to put some jack stands under the axles, pull the wheels off, leave it sitting. We'll take the wheels and tires over to the tire place. So let's get on the loader and raise it up a little bit here. Oh, goodness. <laughs> raise it up enough to get it up off the ground here. That's it, we'll shut it down. Pretty simple. At this point, we'll put our jack stands underneath the axle, which is right here. And we'll go around the other side and do the same thing. So we placed it up on jack stands because we don't know if it's gonna be a day or two, this lift may slowly settle, and we sure don't wanna have our skid loader axles laying on the ground. That wouldn't be very bright. One of the best investments I ever made on my farm, and technology has come a long way with these uh, impact wrenches, but this is great. So simple, makes it so easy. I'm not down here cricking on the wrench. I've got an easy way to get these things off. Cricking, is cricking on the wrench a word? I don't know. So guys, these are monster studs. These are one inch studs. That's a big old boy right there. And we have two, four, six, eight, of these big old studs. And just so you know what the tire is, what kind of tire it is, it is an industrial strength, heavy wall, bobcat tire. And the size, and the size is a 10 by 16.5. So evidently this is a 10 inch wheel. And I don't know how the rest of the math works out. So we'll go to the tire store and we'll find out. Be sure you hang on to your lug nuts, put them in a safe place. We're gonna put them over here in the bucket. And watch them roll out. I'll get you a good close-up of this tire. You can really see it kind of flexing on the rim. Let's see if we can pop it off. Boom, got it right off. Nice. See this tire? Hold on, let me pull you in a little closer. See this tire? Normally it would have a little bit of life left in it, it even though it's all scratched up and beat up. But somehow, right here is the issue. The sidewall right here. It's this sidewall right here, and that's not repairable, I don't think. Okay, let's get wheel number two off here. So folks, now we'll take this on to the tire store. We'll run a few errands. When I get back, we'll reinstall them. I'll tell you what they cost. And we'll go up here and show you this $100 truck. We'll give you a little more detail on it. I washed it, cleaned it. I gotta get a new battery for it. So we'll go get a new battery while we're out on our run. There's a local place here that's really close by that I can go buy a very good reconditioned battery for the old farm truck. And that's pretty much all I need is a reconditioned battery versus paying $140, $150 for a nice battery. I can go buy the same battery that's been reconditioned by the factory for about 60 bucks. Pretty awesome. <laughs> And folks, if you're not familiar with buying tires, either buying tires for your car, your truck, your tractor, or whatever, this price that they give you 99% of the time is moderately negotiable, okay? I know I've said in other videos, if you can't steal it, don't buy it. Well, the retail tire industry has a pretty good markup and they have a little bit of flexibility in there. So if you're a repeat customer, you can sometimes get a really good deal. Or if you're like me and you've got so many vehicles, we're gonna take three vehicles in and have new tires put on them this month. So. We got some negotiating to do. Hopefully we can get a good price on these tires. 
In case anybody's wondering, my rooster still won't shut up. So folks, if you didn't catch the last video, this is our $100 farm truck. Check it out, let's walk around a little bit. We've gotta get the battery out of this thing, but we took it and we cleaned it up. If you saw the video before, it had like a moss, like a layer of moss on it. And that's what happens when you leave vehicles and don't clean them and don't use them. They develop a layer of like, I don't know, mildew or moss. So this thing was covered in mildew. It looks so much better. Let me show you, $100, $100. My neighbor sold this thing to me for a hundred bucks. Look at the inside. Man, that sucker's clean. That's awesome. So check it out. Listen to this door close. Crisp, nice. We gotta pull the battery out. So let's pop the hood, get this battery out so we can drive this truck. Burn off this old gas that I haven't been driven in about three years. And that old crappy ethanol government enforced gasoline is in here destroying my carburetor right now. Garbage gas. So after we jumped it off and we got it home yesterday, which is only mm, a half a mile right down through the woods over here, we disconnected the battery. And I did that just in case we could have a fire issue or something like that with all that jumping and stuff that we had going on. Wanted to make sure that the thing didn't catch on fire. This battery is dead, dead, dead ski. So we're gonna take the battery off its mounts, take it to the battery ring manufacturer up here in town and get us a new battery. Awesome. this truck love it love my Cummins folks I'm still in the driveway so don't give me crap for driving out on the road with the camera this is the point where you click that like button click that thumbs up leave me some comments tell me what you think tell me what you'd like to see more of it's winter time winter time projects are coming on man nice the small town life guys I'm still sitting here at the tire store 15 minutes later the tire store and the DMV both shut down for an hour for lunch. They don't have like rotating, people rotating out to eat lunch. They just shut down for an hour, close the doors and lock them. Welcome to the country. <laughs> kind of inconvenient. Very inconvenient. Let's discuss this for a second. Say I had a business. Say I had a convenience store and I shut down for an hour at lunchtime every day and just sent those customers away. The economy here in North Carolina isn't all that good, especially in the rural areas. Could this be the reason? Or one of the reasons? Hmm. Let's think about that. Hmm. Well, folks, I was 100% wrong. They're $107 a piece. Awesome, awesome. Thought this was gonna cost me about 300 bucks, but turns out a whole lot cheaper. Cool. New battery at the parts store. $142. Reconditioned battery, 40 bucks, 90 day warranty. Folks, if you're like me and you've got a lot of vehicles and a lot of batteries, you might wanna check a place like this out. If you call the auto parts store and get a price, ask them if they know anybody that deals in remanufactured batteries. You might find a local guy like we have here. So the DMV in my town is in this building right here. What? Let's walk over here, I'll show you. So this is the Madison License Plate Agency. It's in an old shoe shop. The shoe shop closed down, and now it's the most pleasant place you'd ever go. The DMV is normally a horrible, horrible experience. When I go to the DMV, it just puts a smile on my face. What a great place. How could it not put a smile on your face? Sweet. All right, folks, so we got our reconditioned battery. We've got it in our truck here. Just gonna tighten up a few more things, and we're gonna fire it up. Yesterday when we bought this truck, we had a little bit of trouble starting it up, and I think it was because of basically a weak electrical system. But once we got it started, it fired right up and it started running. This thing has old gas in it, and it has that old ethanol gas in it that needs to be burnt out. That ethanol gas, which I'll show you in a future vlog, separates okay so water separates from the fuel in a future vlog i'm going to take regular gasoline non-ethanol and i'll take diesel fuel and i'll take off-road diesel fuel and i'll take racing fuel and i'll take kerosene and i'll take ethanol fuel and we'll set all those out on my counter i'm going to let them age i'm going to let them age for probably six months or so and i'm going to show you what happens to that ethanol fuel that ethanol gas 
separates and the water destroys carbureted engines like this. It destroys your small equipment. It destroys everything. The stuff is garbage and I don't care what you think or what you say, the fuel is garbage. It's subsidized government garbage. Our government subsidizes corn so much that it costs more to produce one gallon of ethanol fuel than it's really worth. The government is spending your money on ethanol which is destroying our older vehicles. Is it a plan for us to get these old vehicles out of here? Is it the plan? Is that the plan? What about small farmers? What about people who have tillers and small equipment? It's destroying it. It's not cool. I encourage you to not use ethanol fuels in any of your power equipment. Please don't do that guys. Please, please, please. I can't tell you how many times I've driven down through town and seen lawnmowers sitting on the side of the road where people don't know any better. And what happens is it gums up the carburetor, causes things to corrode because the water separates inside that carburetor. So if you don't use it over the winter and you don't empty your carburetor, you're going to have problems with ethanol fuel. Let's tighten this up, get done, we'll fire it up, see how she does. Now I haven't started it today, so let's see what it does. $100 truck. So far I got $100, $100 in the truck, $78 in getting the taxes and tags, and $40 in the battery. Not bad. What I'm tightening down here is just a battery mounting bracket, okay? And if you don't tighten this down and you go slamming on the brakes or the gas, it causes your battery to flop around. Most of your new vehicles have them, but some of these older vehicles, when you go to buy an older vehicle, you need to look at that, especially like an old Toyota pickup or an old truck that someone's taken off-road. That battery is bounced around in there and it can bounce right onto your fan blades, cut the battery in half and ruin it. So you need to make sure your battery is secure in your vehicle and keep it from catching on fire too. Also when you're hooking up your battery terminals, always hook up the negative terminal first. Make sure your key is off, hook up the negative terminal first and then the positive terminal and make sure your connections are nice and tight. Guys, this may seem like menial work and menial tasks to you. You know what? I'm a professional. I have a college degree, but I should learn this and you should learn this. Everyone should know how to tinker and work on their own vehicle. Take your kid, go buy him an old junker, put it out in the garage and let him work on it. Teach him something. I say teach him something. Teach her something too. Teach her something. Teach your daughter how to change her tire for God's sakes. All right, guys, I haven't started this thing since yesterday. My $100 truck. Let's see how she does. Put the camera here. And that's the sound of our $100 truck. Guys, there you have it. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. A $100 pickup. Runs great. Seems to drive okay. We're going to take it out on the open road, see what she does today. Stick around on the vlog. You'll get to see more of the $100 truck and what I do with it. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate you coming to the vlog with me today. We just had a little bit of work to get done. We had to take the skid steer tires off of the skid loader. I'd never done that before. I didn't know what they cost. 107 bucks a piece. Really can't complain there. Got my $100 truck. Literally, I have somewhere in around $220 in this truck. We're going to take it out for a drive. We're just going to scoot around just like high school. Just get out, cruise around the old pickup truck. Pretty awesome, 1978 Ford. Guys, come on back and see me. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. We're gonna have some awesome fun here on the farm. Come on back and see me now. All right. We'll Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids.